Probably this is Devon Walker. The con the over is that they are overrun with ads. These ads are usually tailored because they are consistent among social media and under the guise of terms and condition, we agree to have our posts and information downloaded to a database. And this database is shared with multiple other corporations and those ad those are the ones that fuel the ads, which brings just an invasive kind of experience for our users all around. Our free thought is also restricted by algorithms. These algorithms are search for explicit content, inappropriate language, or even inappropriate photos, and users are unable to speak freely without the threat of reports or unsolicited con content, comments condemning their content. The bombardment of features non integral to the actual app is also a problem within social media today because so many apps are trying to become something unique or something that or show that they have something that isn't available what they're really doing is just completely is completely overwhelming their users with things that really do not reflect what a social media app should be another problem would be that social media has become the same experience with inter inter different interfaces in the race to become unique there is a standard being created and every social media app is trying to follow the standard and it's all really just the same thing just uh, different colors without our app users tolerate the unnecessary they endure cluttered and overused advertisements data mining and features like dating apps tied in stories and sponsored content which no one signed up for um, censorship is also being tolerated. There is threats of report suspension or even permanent banning based on strict algorithms that will flag someone in a bikini as nudity or a very close curse word to something that isn't. And this, in a way, restricts the content creator um, and what they're able to say and what they're able to post. The Without our app, people also conform. They there is a new the standard that every app is trying to trying to reach that is basically the same thing they become the same website the same media platform and users spend day after day going on the same kind of going, being in the same environment just with different colors this is just really making social media mundane where it should be something so innovative and something creative where people are able to post freely but it's simply just a very rundown television show at this point hey i'm carly and what we want to solve with mesosphere is to provide a uniquely simple app that is all about its users the users create their own experience by forming connections and are in complete control of themselves as well as in control of who sees the content they are posting. Mesosphere is a closed network application that successfully bypasses many of the issues we face on other social media platforms. There is a simplicity through text-only posts with no commentary options, the flexibility to post to users only within your network versus a vast network containing people you may not know, and this is a way of fostering intimacy through a closed network. Um, it's also an app where you are an identity and it is your free canvas of associated thoughts. <clears throat> and Mesosphere provides an experience solely about its users, which is also allowing it to be non-monetizable. I'm Adam and Mesosphere is the product of multiple different tools and technologies that we have woven together in a flexible manner. To start, Node Package Manager um, allowed us to experiment with it the modular way to add and remove different libraries, different features, different sets to our project as we needed. There were some challenges with the with learning how to use it and getting the correct versions of things. So we would occasionally use Node Version Manager to kind of double check our sanity that we have the correct versions for what features we're trying to write in code and deal with errors in NPM. React Native enabled our 
our cross-platform development and we could so that we could write code in one code base and eventually deploy it in the future to both Android and iOS devices. Um, earlier on in the project, we weren't sure which platform we were going to focus on, and so that made it it was the perfect technology for making that decision later on and then expanding on it and changing as the project needed. Firestore provided really good, quick, NoSQL, like remote database functionality. It had tons of documentation. It was really easy to use. And once we set up the part of our project that interacted with the database, we could change the objects on the fly in the data that we wanted to push to the database, and it would just work flexibly. It was also very easy to log in and look at the data. It's not a giant table. Um, it's lots of organized and like human-readable information. Expo and Expo Go provided us our early testing and emulation. We were using it to explore different technologies and kind of start to develop aesthetics and how the app looks. But eventually, we started to run in issues with it. Um, React Native Web started giving us compatibility issues where suddenly our cross compatibility is starting to break. We ran into detox and just testing required their own configurations that we then had to switch between and then switch back from to do more development using ExpoGo. And then finally, our local system emulators just were so much more convenient, we stopped using Expo altogether. And the Android ADK, or the Android SDK and its emulator were just, were just much better. We used this emulator much further on for integrated development. And um, occasionally, we would go back to Expo just to see if we could get it to work or to see if things were different. As we continued, we started to find React components with a little bit of cooperation, a little bit of explanation, were very, very um, easy to write. <laughs> they made asynchronous parts of the code much clearer, much easier to write, and even though they were invisible from a user point of view, from a software point of view, it made our lives much easier. We were getting rid of a thousand lines of code and writing a 200 line React component. We also started to use um, just unit tests and detox behavioral tests to kind of bring together and round out our quality assurance to make sure that as we develop the app, as it gets better, as it gets bigger or changes features in the future, we would have the ability to make sure that things we developed continue to work. These succinct pieces and technologies kind of wove together into a complete development chain with more flexibility for what we've done with the app and what we could do with it in the future. Man, I just, I, I just had to, I just had to delete Instagram. You know, I get on there for a minute or two, check and see what my, what my sisters are doing. You know, try to catch up with people in my life, and I'm just hit with this barrage of ads and sponsored content and clickbait, and it's just so much. I'm looking for a simple, easy to use, intuitive experience that won't overstimulate me or keep me on my phone any longer than I need to be, and that's why I downloaded Mesosphere. So I'm going to go ahead and make an account because I know my friend Kevin is on here. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. Cole L. I hope that won't be taken. Um, yeah, no payment information. Let's see. I want people to know who I am. There. The real one. Because I am a real one. Create account. Aw, awesome. So there's my... MID, I think I just have to send that to Kevin. Go ahead and email that to him real quick. I love this app. It feels so easy to use, and everyone here is people I know personally, and I don't have to worry about all these weird bots or strangers. And I just got a, a text, an email even, from my good buddy Cole. So I'm going to put his ID right up here and add him here on this app. Look, there it is. Add friend. That's right. That's my best buddy. He's going to add him there. Um, oh, it's pending. I guess he's going to add me back. All right, well, I'm going to make him a post. It's waiting for him when he gets here. There you go. All right, once he gets me back, he's going to see my, my very nice welcome message. He's going to go right home here at Mesosphere. All right, I hope he got my email. Oh, notification? Who could that be? Yo, it's Kevin. Uh, of course. Of course, I'm going to accept that friend request. All right, no more notifications. Go to my friends. There he is. Ah, the only Kevin, obviously. 
Let's see, posts. Oh, it's me. Like. Oh, that's cool. Is that <laughs> she's Macbeth? Oh, I'm gonna send him a post too. Hey, Kevin, thanks for showing me Mesosphere. Oh, beautiful. And of course, I don't want to look like a loser, so I'm going to like my own post. Awesome. I wonder what else I can do. So Cole Lewis, it's not very fly. I'm going to try to try and change that up. Let's do Cole with a lowercase. Like, I, like I'm cool enough to not care about if I'm capitalizing it correctly. There. Probably do the same thing with this. I don't know. Add some more information about myself. We'll see. Oops. There, change that up. And yeah, that's all I've got so far. Wow, this is so easy to use. It's simple. I don't have to dig through all this stuff to figure out where I'm going or what I'm doing. I've just got Kevin right there. Um, you know, I'm not gonna have to worry about creepos or anybody weird trying to trying to follow my account or, or stalk me or anything. This is just so simple and easy to use. I think this acts as a perfect contrast to the maximalist world of social media in which the one rule is to be able to do everything. I think Mesosphere is perfect because it excels at doing one thing beautifully, and that's intimately connecting people through a simple to use interface that prioritizes interaction and making the experience of Mesosphere the sum of its users. This is Kevin, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how our app succeeds and maybe where it doesn't so much. So as was shown, as was discussed, as was displayed, um, we have managed to put together this idea of a node voluntarily building out its own network. Mesosphere allows users to create their own customized content network with no chance of any unwanted media, unwanted ad material, unwanted data mining appearing on their end. And that's a huge success for us. That was what we always wanted to have happen for the user. We wanted them to feel like they were in control of their feed. It's the whole point of Mesosphere. So in that way, we had a, a, you know, a hitting of that initial goal. But we did also want to talk about users controlling their own data. We wanted users to feel like they had complete control over their own data. We had this peer-to-peer -peer network idea where each node would be a peer and you would transmit data only to each other, no center server, and we didn't manage to hit that. Um, development troubles along the way forced us to abandon this data ownership model. And that was an important part of the pitch. We always wanted to keep it in the back of our mind, see if we could pursue it on the side ends, and it's a shame that we weren't able to get there. Um, but still, in the end, we were able to make this app address what we wanted it to for the most part. And the path to filling what it originally was intended to be, that peer to peer model, is still out there. We just couldn't get to it in our limited time frame. So, if we could further develop the app to make it better, I think that's the number one thing. This actual peer to peer data fetching is so easy to put in because a lot of our app is just pulling data from the Firebase file on the back end. So just mixing out that back end and not touching the front end should work more or less exactly as coded right now. Um, and there are libraries for this. We toyed around with one for a month and we got it working on the web, but it wouldn't port over to Android well, it wouldn't work with React well. We couldn't get these two things to play together nicely. Uh, there are other options. There's this great React Native Wi-Fi peer-to-peer library that I found recently that does exactly what we want, but it doesn't work on emulators. So in the future, if you were going to develop this app further, it would be really easy to pursue these ideas. We just didn't have the capacity at the moment of actually developing the app. Uh, there are other things too. There's you know sending photos and videos. There's being able to reply, send notifications, direct messages. These things are not necessary to the core idea of what Messenger is meant to be, but they're so prevalent on other social media apps, they've almost become synonymous with the word social media. Um, so it's definitely noticeable that they're not there. Uh, and they probably could have been managed by us given a little more time. We all came into this project with varying levels of development experience, basically no JavaScript knowledge, very limited mobile development understanding. To be able to go from nothing to the 1.0 we've got in the five very busy months we had, we had to cut some stuff that we would have rather kept around, uh, and that sucks. But here at the end, we've still managed to bring about a lot of the initial vision that we had in mind when we thought up this app you know, six months ago when we were all a little more <laughs> naive. Um, this app is not everything that it could have been, but it's still an incredible way to let users retain control of what they're looking at, stay you know, secure in the knowledge that their data is, for the most part, theirs and can't be used against them 
We are immensely proud of what this app turned out to be, and we know it could be so much more.